Hey there nation and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Chiefske, and we are back with another episode of Hobbyside. This is a series that is dedicated to showing you guys the showcasing our terrain as well as the miniatures that we have in our studio's collection in all aspects of the hobby aspect of miniatures wargaming. And on today's episode, as you guys can see, we are taking a look at Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team, we're looking at the Geller Pox Infected Kill Team. That came out, oh, a while ago, actually. Um, these miniatures are actually quite old, tenly speaking. Um, these are not the original Geller Pox Infected uh, from the 2020 Kill Team Edition. I believe in 2020 or was it 2019 that the Games Workshop released the Kill Team uh, Rogue Trader Box set. You basically had two new factions at that time. You had the Elucidian Star Striders, which were the guys who actually owned the ship, as well as Rogue Trader ship. And then you had the Geller Pox Infected, which were the antagonists in that box set. Well, I never bought that box set because I thought it was too expensive at the time. And I was always waiting for Games Workshop to release these kill teams in their own individual solo boxes. But it just never happened until last year. Last year is when they actually decided to release these by themselves in their own original box set when they re-released the new edition of uh, Kill Team. Which is funny because right in the background here we have their Into the Darkness um, terrain set for the Gallo Dark. And then that's when I snagged these guys. I actually got them on Amazon for a pretty good price. Got them for about $35 at Amazon at the time. Pretty cheap considering what these guys are all about. And this is the end result of my painting. I do have a cheap shot that is out that talks about exactly how we went about painting these guys. So in today's video we will be going over and showcasing this unit. We'll talk about his design aspects, how he went about painting these things, and of course showcase the end result of these guys look like. So that being said, let's get this video review on a roll. Alright, so the first thing you might notice about the Gillard Pox effect, especially the way that I paint these guys, is that these guys are actually much more brightly colored than you usually see in um, a lot of people when they do their painting. What they do with a lot of Nurgle miniatures, a problem with Nurgle miniatures is that Nurgle miniatures can be kind of bland if you're not careful. Uh, just a bunch of greens and browns and there's kind of like not very eye-catching at all. But uh, that's the problem you run into when you actually run into Nurgle miniatures. Now I do like painting Nurgle miniatures because Nurgle miniatures are extremely easy to paint in my opinion. Um, they have very large details because they're very big, bulky, chunky. Uh, looking design so because of that they do have a lot of details that are very easy to paint That's one reason why I like um, Nurgle miniatures so much another reason why I like them so much is because they're actually quite forgiving uh, For these miniatures because if you do make a mistake as you're painting these guys up It doesn't matter because if you add blood gore as well as you know pus effect rot effect to these miniatures It actually goes a long way to hiding any mistakes that you might make when you're actually putting these guys together So that's one of the reasons why I love painting a Nurgle miniatures so much. They're very very forgiving in my opinion as well. Plus they just look disgusting and rotten and who doesn't like that look? So that's the reason why, uh, that's the thing about Nurgle miniatures are actually kind of nice. So when we came up to painting these guys, I had a couple of goals in mind. One, I want to maintain that vibrancy, that color that I like to use so much whenever I uh, paint up miniatures. I really like a big fan of bright bold colors in miniatures. I think they look really good. I think it has to do with the fact because I got into wargaming in the mid 90s. Uh, back when Games Workshop's color scheme were very cartoony looking, uh, traditionally speaking, and very bright colored. Maybe that's why. But I wanted to maintain that same look for these guys as well. The second thing I wanted to do too is I wanted to go the darker skin tone for these guys as well. You see a lot of Nurgle miniatures have always got pale flesh. You know, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Except that I just thought that was kind of boring. I wanted to do something different with my set. So I wanted to give these guys a darker skin tone. And that's what I did. But at the same time, we retain that virus in color. And I think I actually accomplished that objective pretty well. Now, a lot of people have been asking me online if uh, Commander Chiefs guy, are you going to be playing Warhammer 40k Kill Team? You know what? I don't know yet. Um, I do have the box sets for the Gallo Dark Terrain, so it would make sense for me to do so. I do have access to the rules. It's just that it's just another game i got to memorize, another set of rules i got to memorize as well. Um, I've, been getting, I mean, I've been struggling to get the games in that I have been getting as of late with, uh, with my gaming group. Uh, whew, the last few months of 2022 were just hellacious for my gaming group, unfortunately. Just a lot of drama, just in real life struggles. It just really messed up my gaming group a lot. So getting games in right now has just been... I've been really lucky getting the games that I have been, have been getting in with my gaming group. So that's a nice part. So adding another thing on top of that, probably not so much. I would like to get into Kill Team. I think it would be kind of cool, but I don't know. Still kind of the fence on it real quick. 
However, though, we do have that new boarding rules that came out for Warhammer 40k. You can pay at 500 points and do all CQB type playing uh, on ships. So who knows what the future holds for these guys. I primarily use these guys for Nicromundas, where I primarily bought these guys for. And uh, that's the reason why I got into them. So first of all, let's go ahead and talk about the big boys in the back. So first of all, we got uh, Volgar Thrice Cursed. This is the leader of the kill team. As you can see, we went kind of like this three different colors for his flesh. We went kind of like this pale bluish gray color for some of his limbs. We went this rotten kind of Frankenstein green for some of his limbs as well. And then this darker skin tone for his torso. The reason why I did that is because worst was ever that these three guys got merged together into one giant monster creature that has a flaming belly and a walking furnace with drills and stuff. So it looks properly crazy and insane looking and I wanted to keep that color scheme going throughout. I also like the use of different metallics that we have as well. So that guy was actually a lot of fun to paint. I really like the way he came out. Then of course we have this guy here, the Butcher Cleaver, the Flesh Screamer is what he's called. Now the Flesh Screamer I thought looked kind of weird originally because he just all pale is what he was. Pale flesh, white hair, white clothes. Um, not very interesting looking at all. So I decided to go with the darker skin tone. Go with this crazy like neon green hair and orange jumpsuit. Make him look like he was a convict or something with these screaming faces. So very, very disgusting and uh, very, very nurgly. Which I really love. I really like this huge meat cleaver that he actually carries around, which is absolutely kind of fantastic as well. So this was a very fun miniature to paint. Another cool one too is the lumber gas, which I really liked as well. I really love these mutations of spines coming out of his back, which looks really cool. I also like the way he's got like sunglasses on still. He's got like a, a rot fly growing out of him, which is kind of cool. Love this weird looking cloth thing that he carries as well. A lot of pustules and a lot of different uh, events going on with him there. And then I love this creature here, the Bloat Spawn, also known as the Call of Cthulhu looking guy. It's kind of neat because he's got like tentacles and stuff and like fish hooks and things sticking out of his body. I'm not sure why the warp made this guy into this. You know, he's got a fish hook up to his hip. But whatever, you know, it's cool. It's the warp. You know, trying to go figure, right? Trying to describe what's going on with the warp. What I really like about this guy is if you look closely at his wound right here, there's actually a face peeking out of that, which I thought was really, really cool as well. I like this really nasty, dirty, rotten... Uh, purplish color and green girls that he got on his body like tentacles and stuff and then of course we have our little three little vox i believe they're called oh, Geller pox mutants there we go those guys are cool they're called vox shamblers i believe they were called the last time what with this beautiful kind of teal color uniform to make it look like these guys are civilians for the most part love these like mechanical vox skulls that they have as well as improvised weapons looks very borderlands um the video game borderlands have weapons that look like this that the bad guy bandits use i thought that was kind of neat so it's very, very fun. As you can see, put a lot of homemade rot and gore effect. You could use Nurgle's rot, you could use Blood for the Blood God, but that stuff's expensive when you could just take acrylic paint and mix it with polyacrylic uh, clear gloss to make your slime effects, which is what I use because then you'll never run out. But yeah, these are the main fighters for the kill team and the showcase pieces for these guys as well. So I really love the way that those guys all turned out. I plan on using these guys as uh, slave ogrens, actually, for our up for our um, Nicaragua Ashways campaign. I'm playing Nurgle Corrupted Slave Ogrens, and you might be wondering, well, why commit a cheapskate? Because life is too short to do things easy, and uh, that'd be fun to play these guys. So I'll have these four major guys here be some of my slave ogrens, with these guys being like um, what are they called, Lobo slaves. So yeah, and then of course, since I have these little guys here, might as well paint those little guys as well. So let's go ahead and talk about the smaller members of this kill team next. All right, so up first, let's talk about these four guys. These guys are called the Glitchlings. I believe these guys have to deal with like opening and closing doors, I believe, is what they used for in kill team. But as you can see here, went with that pale flesh kind of look to these guys as well. Went for this bright blue, uh, kind of like mohawk flaming design on their skull helmets. I just love the way how expressive um, Nurgle miniatures are. Let me see if I can zoom in for you guys and sharpen it up. There we go. I just love how expressive Nurgle miniatures have always been. They've always had like this kind of like jovial, kind of like practical joke clown, kind of mischievous look going on with their sculpts. And that's the thing I always liked about Nurgle miniatures. Like they're very, very serious in the sense that they, you know, they bring rotten death and disgusting disease and stuff, but they're also kind of like clowns as well, which is actually kind of cool. So I love painting up these guys. I also love these sledge grubs as well. They're disgusting, as they all should be. Giant maggot monsters are eating people, oozing out ooze and stuff and spraying disease and vomiting things. 
So once again, went with that pale kind of color with uh, dry brushing a green. That's how I got that sickly flesh look. I actually paint these both units in like a pale flesh color, and then I dry brush them with lime sherbet apple barrel paint to kind of give this like this rotten kind of pallid look to them. So that would look like they're kind of made out of rotting flesh, and so that's why I went about going with that as well. And of course, we have these like giant, uh, these giant tick-looking creatures, the curse mites as they're known as. I'm not exactly sure what they do in Kill Team. I haven't really looked at the rules for them. But they just look absolutely disgusting and terrifying as giant tick monsters with open sores along the thoraxes, huge tentacle mouths causing all kinds of problems. Uh, how I achieved that look is I actually based them in black and then dry brush in the wintergreen, which is the same kind of chitinous uh, look I use for the bloat flies that we use in my studio's 3000 point um, Legion of Nurgle army. I did exactly the same thing for these ice stinger swarms as well. With that winter green on black, dry brush kind of sickly green chitinous look on those guys. I really like these miniatures a lot because like they're swarming around this head, for example, from the summit's head as well as this torso. So these things look like flesh-eating swarms, which are absolutely terrifying. So yeah, really a lot of fun playing painting these. These took a while to paint, not because there were it was so complicated to paint. It took a while to paint just because there's so many of them, actually. So you got actually four, you actually got, what is it, six sets of miniatures. You have your four giant guys, right, they're giant monsters, so each one has their own individual paint job. You got your three uh, mutants, they have to have their own aesthetic. You have your glitchlings, which is another group, that's three. Your sludge worms, that's four, five, yeah, six different squads, basically, which you're painting them with different looks and stuff. Now the nice thing about these guys, because they're all Nurgle, they're all kind of like keyed together in the same kind of color palette with browns, blues, and greens. And then of course we also did our studio's textured wasteland, toxic, oozy, wasteland based work. All I do for that one, I just use sand to make the texturing. Paint that in black and dry brush it with some burnt umber and terracotta to make it look like wasteland. And then I actually use Kiwi Paint by Apple Barrel Paint, which is like almost like a day glow yellow. And I paint that to make the ponds of ooze and stuff. And then take our homemade uh, slime effect and put that on top of it to create this kind of wasteland, boggy, swampy, toxic, oozy look for the uh, bases. And then of course I ruined them in Burnt Sienna, so that way I use this same base style for all Nurgle miniatures that we have in our studio's collection. So uh, Death Guard, for example, for 40k they have the same look. These guys had that same look. Same thing with my Chaos Legion of Nurgle for Warm Fantasy. They have that same look as well. I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but basing actually has a lot to do to tie your army together. It's actually the base work. It actually becomes the primary color for your army, actually, because it's the one thing that's universal throughout all your armies. So if you decide to use basing, decide to do base work for your miniatures, make sure all the base work is the same for your entire army. Otherwise, it looks kind of weird. We have different types of bases. Uh, with your army as well because it does actually act as the unifying element in the design aspect of your armies but yeah that's pretty much how i went about painting these guys we did use a quick paint method uh using nothing but cheap materials i just use cheap craft paints for the bases base wear, uh, base coats do some dry brush with the uh with, to add some more detail with some depth we do an all over oil wash with minwax polyacrylic mission oak to get that pit queen, uh, quick paint look, we then spray them with matte varnish to matte down the sheen of that uh, polyurethane, and then we base them. Very, very quick and very, very simple. Really like the way that these guys came out. All right, so that's good to do for this one. As you can see, these guys are all fully painted, ready to bring Rotten Ruin to Kill Team, Warhammer 40K, Nicaragua. Or whatever else I want to use them for. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with these guys. I just like the way these miniatures look. I thought it would be really fun to paint. And I plan on using these seven here for the uh, Nicaragua. The rest of these guys, well, we might as well paint them up since you have the whole set. But that's good to do for this, you guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good for this week, guys. I'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.